the cinema hope we would have a great learning session and same session will be continued today also for today we have a resource person uh dr ankit gar i take this opportunity to welcome and introduce uh, dr ankit gar uh, dr ankit gar is associated with ajay kumar gar institute of management he has more than 12 years of teaching and research experience he is an education professional with phd in marketing and managed masters degree in business administration masters of commerce and bachelors in engineering from dr apj bhukam technical university he is also having a professional certificate focused in data science offered by ibm digital and social media marketing offered by google marketing analytics offered by university of virginia and iit kharagpur and microsoft office specialist by microsoft he has published many research papers and patent book book chapters in national international journals and presented papers in various national international conferences his area of interest are artificial intelligence machine learning data analysis marketing research r programming python programming data science marketing advertising operations management name to some dr ankit gar i welcome you for this particular session thank you sir thank you rahul sir thank you so much right. the session is all yours so uh, good afternoon dear participants welcome to this online faculty development program session on the topic of plagiarism ethics detection and removal today we gather virtually to explore the world of academic integrity and address the challenges posed by plagiarism in our academic and professional spheres now let me ask a question to kick start our session when you hear the term plagiarism what thoughts or experiences come to your mind uh, please take a moment and uh, type your responses uh, in the chat box then we'll together discuss them as a group when you hear the term plagiarism what thoughts and experiences come to our mind in the meanwhile uh, let us start uh, let's explore the ideas together to develop deeper into the world of plagiarism ethics and detection and removal throughout this session we will cover essential topics such as understanding plagiarism its ethical implications different types of plagiarism and effective strategies for detection and prevention we will also discuss how to foster a culture of academic integrity into a within our institutions and uh, the practical hands on on turnitin software to uh, check plagiarism chat gpt how to how we can use chat gpt and grammarly software now let's embark this enlightening journey together once again i am thank you all uh, for joining this fdp and now i'm just sharing my screen Uh, sir, my screen is visible, Rahul sir. Yes, sir. Ankit sir, visible. Hai. Yeah. So uh, let us start the session by the quotes by Albert Camus: "A man without ethics is a wild beast loosed upon this world." So, in this session, we will discuss what is plagiarism in academic research. what is plagiarism the meaning of plagiarism definition of plagiarism and the nuances of plagiarism our first topic is this what is plagiarism what is plagiarism plagiarism in simple terms we can say plagiarism is unauthorized use of others work or someone is saying in the chat box that something copying when we copy some others work some unauthorized work is known as plagiarism it may be intentional and unintentional we'll discuss this in detail later on the birth of plagiarism how we you know introduce this word plagiarism 
from copy uh, you know from classroom copying uh, from friends and text now we are copying from internet with the help of computers and all right so from the very start we people are copying copying and copying we say that these are my words these are your words these are his word ho, uh, her words and all right so marcus valerius is the person who introduced the term called plagiarism which is taken from plagiarism the latin word and the meaning of plagiarism is kidnapping now the definition of plagiarism plagiarism is stealing others work or ideas and presenting that as your own right taking over the ideas methods or written words of another without acknowledgement and with the intention that they can be uh, taken as the work of the deceiver this definition is given by uh, american association of university professors so this definition clearly says that if we you know if we are taking other words others words and uh, saying that these are my words it is known as plagiarism if we are not acknowledging the term right you are seeing this image of marcus valerius this image is non copyrighted and uh, this is available in public domain right so i uh, i have not used any source or any citation for this image on the other hand how can i get to know this i'm just showing you i click on uh, uh, wikipedia uh, if i click on this uh, image and uh, you can check this permission detail uh, let uh, blow on left uh, left hand side this work is free and may be used by any person and of anyone for any purpose right so i can use this image freely without any citation but we should cite or we should mention the source like as i have also, i have mentioned here that this image was taken with uh, wikipedia right now the according to merriam webster online dictionary plagiarism plagiarize means to steal or pass off uh, the ideas or words of another as one's own to use another's production without crediting the source to commit literary theft to present as new and original idea or product derived from the existing source so uh, one question arises here can the words and ideas uh, really be stolen the answer is yes it can be stolen plagiarism is a breach of academic integrity and it is it is unethical in nature uh, now let us come to the nuances of plagiarism what comes under plagiarism changing someone else work and claiming as your own is uh, comes under plagiarism copying words or ideas from someone else without giving credit to them failing out failing to put a quotation in quotation marks when borrowing someone else work so to mentioning to uh, you know citing or to quoting the some others work is very much necessary to reduce plagiarism giving incorrect information about the source of the quotation changing words but copying the sentence structure of the source without giving credit copying ideas videos songs pictures diagrams tables etc without giving the credit is known as uh, it comes under plagiarism why plagiarism is wrong plagiarism is wrong in various aspects as we are cheating ourselves if we are plagiarizing we are using some plagiarized data we are cheating others also we are damaging our future we are damaging our own reputation as well as the reputation of the institutions in which for which we are working we are breaking the policies and rules and integrity right now the consequences of plagiarism if you are using uh, some plagiarized data you can be you know you, you can lose your studentship there can be a withdrawal of degree if already awarded this can be you know the uh, prospect losing employment penalty and jail can also be done so there is a zero tolerance policy for plagiarism now let us come to the types of plagiarism types of plagiarism means that we have two types of plagiarism intentional plagiarism and unintentional plagiarism intentional is when we are plagiarizing the things by choice and the conscious plagiarism under unintentional we have plagiarism by ignorance and unconscious plagiarism 
so let us uh, uh, discuss this in detail intentional plagiarism is knowingly present others ideas or works as your own the purposeful or deliberately plagiarism if we are doing conscious plagiarism and the authors when the author openly violates the research policy and research ethics it comes under ple uh, intentional plagiarism the unintentional plagiarism is unknowingly presenting others ideas or work due to the lack of understanding it might be the case sometimes purposeless or accidental uh, plagiarism unconscious plagiarism authors you know, unknowingly violates the research policy and research ethics although but uh, but both the part types are comes under plagiarism whether it is intentional or unintentional plagiarism now let us discuss uh, the thing uh, you know we are we all are dealing uh, these types of in, uh, plagiarism day by day in our daily routine so let us discuss the first concept in intentional plagiarism is ghost writing and under ghost writing we have this engaging part here author asks uh, as you can see in the picture also author asks to write a paper on his or her behalf by paying money to a writing company that writing company engage ghost writer to write the paper ghost writer writes the paper for the author they after writing the ghost uh, after writing ghost writer then sends the uh, paper to the company back and then company sends the written paper to the author this term is known as engaging under ghost writing i believe all of you are clear with this then we have buying here author asked customers uh, custom written papers or well written papers by paying some money to the uh, uh, writing company or a writing hub then writing hub they have already you know too much custom papers with them they custom that paper as per the choice uh, as per your choice and they send the custom written paper to the author by changing uh, some necessary requirements this is known as buying and comes under ghost writing then we have paying the contract cheating author asks to write a paper on his or her behalf by paying money to the ghost writer and ghost writer writes a paper for the author and send it back to the author this term is known as paying or contract cheating then next is we have photocopying photocopy means uh, as uh, sometimes uh, uh, you know we people are also doing something uh, the, uh, in the way that we are copying uh, the original text of uh, you know or the works of others and we are changing something and we significant uh, we are changing some significant portion from that and we are uh, you know pasting that uh, portion as our own work so this should not be done this copying should not be done then next is verbatim verbatim is the when we are using you know text or the work of others uh, we are uh, you know copying that in our document without any attribution or quotation without acknowledgement if we are using uh, others work this uh, plagiarism is uh, comes under verbatim in photocopy then next is we have collective gathering uh, collective gathering uh, we can say it as shake and paste plagiarism we you know collect some data from other sources uh, likewise we have two three papers with us we select some data from one paper some from other paper some from other paper and then we shake that data we may uh, uh, prepare some paragraph or some you know uh, text with that and we copy that text as our work this should not be done this is known as collective gathering plagiarism under intentional plagiarism then uh, another one is mashup we are using the data without attribution or without citing the data of the uh, without citing or without giving the references to the original uh, uh, authors another one is masking masking is we uh, when we copy some essential contents right we paraphrase that content we uh, then we alter the sentences and we uh, change the phrases and we use that uh, part as our work as authors work this is known as masking we are you know like we are pasting some mask on the data we are saying that this is my data this is my research paper and this also comes under intentional plagiarism next is we have paraphrasing paraphrasing in simple uh, in, we have two types of paraphrasing with us uh, one is uh, simple paraphrasing simple par in simple paraphrasing we put a paper we paraphrase that paper and we you know uh, give that uh, this is my paper 
I have worked upon it and this is my paper, I have written this paper. In some other cases, we have mosaic, hybrid or patchwork paraphrases, paraphrasing. We use some content from other research papers, we paraphrase that paper, uh, that portion of the paper and we include in that our paper. This is, also, this is known as paraphrasing plagiarism and comes under intentional also. Next is we have self-plagiarism. Sometimes we repub uh, republishing already, you know, published own paper elsewhere without proper acknowledgement and permission. This is known as dual publication or duplication. Sometimes we, you know, might be in confusion that uh, this is my paper. Uh, uh, why should uh, not I use that paper? Because I have written this paper, so I can use this paper. But this comes under plagiarism also, right? So reusing own published data and materials without acknowledgement is co uh, comes under pl self plagiarism. Publishing a smaller or larger part of own work without proper acknowledgement. Paraphrasing own previously published work without proper acknowledgement. Breaking of own previously published larger studies uh, into smaller sections and publishing as a new one. This is known as redundancy publication. So we should avoid this task. We should, you know, change the things in a way that we can introduce some new concept in that uh, paper. And uh, we also, you know, have to use a proper citation, proper acknowledgement from where we are using the data. Then only we can reduce the plagiarism. Next one is invalid sources. Sometimes we mislead citation. We you know use the data of some other person and we give some references of other persons. This is known as misleading citation. Sometimes we fabricate the data. We are uh, not using the text which is given by the original author and we are you know giving some references. Sometimes we use falsification. We are uh, we think that uh, the uh, other person who are reviewing our paper, our papers are fools and we try to make them foolish and we are using some wrong data and wrong references also right so these are invalid sources these are all these also comes under intentional plagiarism next one is we have author perspective plagiarism this is uh, you know very famous nowadays authors are you know submitting their papers in uh, different different journals so this is known as replication or author submission violence this should also not be done to reduce uh, you know research paper uh, to reduce plagiarism so then next is author perspective plagiarism misleading attribution that is inaccurate uh, authorship sometimes we see that uh, uh, someone who is pursuing phd or his masters and uh, his guide uh, ask them to put their name uh, in, uh, in at the first place and uh, uh, say uh, but when the researcher research scholars is, is uh, you know whole solely writing that research paper but guide fo force them to put their name guides name on first part so this comes and this also comes under you know plagiarism and this is misleading attribution sometimes uh, we uh, use uh, uh, this <clears throat> collusion uh, or unethical or unauthorized collaboration we use that uh, uh, you are my friend and uh, he, he is my colleague so i can use his or her name in my paper uh, this is also comes under plagiarism we should not uh, do this we should avoid this type of collaboration with others Next is we have translational plagiarism. Uh, we, uh, we have some paper with original language and we uh, you know, are translated that language without any acknowledgement. This comes under translational plagiarism. Then idea theft, we are stealing <coughs> others idea and presenting as our own, uh, presenting others idea without giving any credit. So uh, uh, you, you can see that uh, in, till now, I use that we, uh, I use many a times that we should give credit to others, we should acknowledge, we should mentioning the resources, the sources from where we are using the data. Now we have unintentional plagiarism. Unintentional plagiarism, we have first foot and footnote. We, uh, likewise, I, you know, show you that uh, image of Marcus. I, you know, I use the source that I have taken that image from Wikipedia. Right. So whenever we use some quotes, whenever we use some uh, images uh, in our research, we should, you know, mention that in the footnote that this image or this uh, particular, uh, you know, image uh, table or this particular, you know, uh, equation we are taking, we have taken from this particular source. Right. So to reduce the plagiarism, when we failure to quote, sometimes we use others' data and we we uh, you know forgot or we failure to quote them. So this comes under intentional plagiarism, unintentional plagiarism. Fairly, uh, the same case is with citation. 
we use the uh, portion of the other's verb but we forget or we failure to cite the source this comes under unintentional plagiarism right next is incorrect paraphrase uh, sometimes it may be happen that uh, you know we use some others data some uh, you know source from other research papers and uh, we paraphrase that but before uh, when we paraphrase the things we should cite the proper citation we should mention that i have used that part i have used that uh, you know paragraph from that particular research paper only uh, falsification of citation is not allowed right then it comes under unintentional plagiarism only now question arises why plagiarism is a problem we are conducting research we are making some uh, we, uh, you know we are giving our contribution to the society we are finding some new uh, fi uh, conclusions to the society we are helping industries also so the question arises why plagiarism is a problem plagiarism is a problem because plagiarism is a form of theft or limits the own learning it is like a thief, a thief is uh, you know stealing physical property in when we are plagiarizing the things when we are using some plagiarized things we are stealing the intellectual properties of the others right so plagiarism is a problem we should avoid plagiarism Pla plagiarism is the form of cheating also this shows the illiteracy of the person right plagiarism is a form of academic dishonesty and breaks the integrity so we should avoid the plagiarism to, uh, because if we are constructive in nature, we can give new outcomes, which uh, new outcomes in the way that it can be beneficial to the society, it can be beneficial to us also. But if we are destructive the system with the help of this plagiarism, then we uh, the result will get uh, will get plagiarism also, right? So we are not giving some new to the society. So, to give some new things to the society to give some new outcomes to the society we should avoid the term plagiarism next one is plagiarism is the is a violation of ethics and negates skills and knowledge if you know if we are regularly using some others data and putting that data into uh, in like uh, we have all uh, we have discussed on the first slide that this is my word these are my words this is my paper this you know reduces our skills and knowledge basically we are not updating ourselves this violates uh, uh, the ethics also right then now let us come to the uh, main aspect uh, for us is text plagiarism unauthorized use of others language and text comes under text plagiarism textual plagiarism is using others ideas opinion or thought and transforming those texts into incorporating transformed text into own works without acknowledgement using others spoken words or any speech in incorporating those texts without proper acknowledgement using others written words or written material without proper attribution to the person translating someone else work into other language in incorporating translated text into own work without acknowledgement so we should avoid textual plagiarism how to remove this textual plagiarism see i am saying we should avoid or we should remove textual plagiarism the point comes is how to remove that textual plagiarism right so we uh, what not comes under textual plagiarism we will discuss this uh, uh, then strategies to remove textual plagiarism and the master plan to avoid the texture plagiarism. So these are the points which we will discuss right now. Uh, what not comes under textual uh, text plagiarism? The first one is common knowledge. It is a knowledge or information known by most of the people which are publicly available and easily observable. Why the common knowledge is uh, known as common knowledge? It is not owned by a specific people or group. It is shared knowledge. It is publicly available knowledge with widely known facts. For example, what comes under common knowledge? It's no need to cite this, right? Widely known facts, we have uh, the facts which are available in public domain, like Earth revolves around the sun, right? This is the fact which we all know. So there, sh there is no need to you know cite this. For example, we have Delhi is the capital of India, publicly known fact. We should, uh, uh, we, there is no need to cite this also, right? APJ Abdul Kalam is known as the missile man of India. This is a historical fact. 
So we should also use this uh, uh, statement without any citation. Then we have uh, widely known phrases, expressions and common sayings. Action speaks louder than words. We, sh we can use these type of phrases or exp uh, you know common sayings without any citation in our research papers. Common terms and common knowledge with the field of topic, we can also use like uh, in the physics, a student do research relating to the field of electric current, right? And suppose uh, he mentioned, Register opposes the flow of current in electric circuits. That register is opposes. This is the nature of resistor that it opposes the flow of current in electric circuits. So this is the common knowledge in the field of physics, and we can use uh, that uh, in our research paper also. Hence, uh, it is not uh, you know treated as plagiarism if we use these type of common phrases, common knowledge in our paper. Next is what comes under common knowledge. Again, uh, if we have scientific, uh, no, standard scientific symbols like A plus B whole square equals to A square plus B square plus 2AB. So this is the fundamental equation of mathematics, right? We denote uh, theta angle by this uh, symbol theta. So there is no need to cite this, right? I believe it is clear that uh, what comes under common knowledge and we can, what we can use in our uh, research paper without citation, right? Non-copyrighted public domain works we can also use like as I have used the image of that uh, Marcus in the first slide. Uh, what not comes under common knowledge? Right? And uh, what not come under common knowledge? We need to cite it. Remember, we need to cite it. What comes and what not comes under common knowledge? Not widely known facts. Likewise, we have Orisa becomes Odisha in 2011. Right? This is the amendment which was done in the constitution of india in 2011 so we should give references to that right this is not a common knowledge this is not a widely known fact uh, government of india make an amendment in the act in the constitution that uh, now onwards in from 2011 onwards we use urisa as odisha so we should mention we, we have to mention the references in that facts and statistics or numbers or data Likewise, we have COVID-19 positive cases in Orisha is 4.37% uh, as on March, uh, you know, 4, 2022. So we should mention the reference. We should give the referencing to this data as we have to give some reference also, right? So without referencing, this data can be termed as plagiarized data. Others' opinion, research results from others, you know, studies, uh, controversial information or statements, facts outside a specific discipline, and other interpretations. We have to cite all these things. Otherwise, it comes under plagiarism. How to decide which information is considered as common knowledge? This thing we have to ask ourselves. Right. We, uh, as a researcher, uh, we uh, know that uh, this is a common phrase. This is a worldwide known fact, and this is the uh, fact that uh, I should, uh, you know, mention or I should use some referencing to this fact. So, who is the audience or the reader? What <coughs> does your reader already know? Does your audience ask about the correctness of information? So, master idea for this is when you are in doubt, cite it. Like as I used in my third slide that I use the image of this Marcus from, uh, and I mentioned the source there, right? So when you are in doubt whether this data is in a public domain or I can cite it, or, uh, whether there is a need to cite it or not, cite it. Next is we have approaches to remove plagiarism. Uh, we have two types of approach with us, unethical approach and ethical approach, right? Text tweaking, and uh, how many words you have to change so that it does uh, it, it it is not comes under plagiarism this is known as text text tweaking changing text by synonym altering text rearrangement of text comes under uh, text tweaking this is unethical in nature right <coughs> although with the help of this text tweaking we can uh, you know deduce our plagiarism as shown in the figure also uh, as shown here in the slide that uh, first we have a plagiarized data with 88 percent similarity index given by turnitin where given by orkund it, it is 92 percent and after the uh, tweaking of text right we reduced it by uh, to five percent but this is not ethical in nature this is unethical approach to you know, remove the plagiarism and the ethical approach is Research, uh, we should follow some research norms and strategies, own writings in own language and words. 
by this also we can reduce our uh, plagiarism for this ethical approach we have we must have to you know remember that we have to cite the references we have to cite the uh, <coughs> portion or we uh, from where i have taken the uh, data right this this in this from this way also we can reduce our plagiarism from 88 to 5 percent of what can be the case now the strategy is to remove the text plagiarism uh, they, uh, this is the mnemonics unique research paper qualifies the pure corner and these are the terms which we will discuss uh, uh, later that uh, u stand for understand r stands for research p stands for permission q for quotation p again p for paraphrase and citation if we follow this, uh, you know, <clears throat> we can say process, URPQPC, we can write a good research paper, a quality research paper for us. Now, let us start to discuss these. To understand, unique, uh, you under this phrase, unique research paper qualify pure corner. We are discussing here now, understand, right? Understand your research context. Identify, identify your research, what you are uh, doing, what, uh, the purpose of the research identify what to conclude and what not to include in the research paper right this is the most important aspect of a research that we have to identify what to include in our research and what not to include right then only we can get the quality research paper with us uh, identify is there any conflict in your research or not uh, if there is any conflict we found then we should avoid that part then focus on your concern topic area only then read until you understand completely. That is why our guide also uh, guides also suggest that uh, you know you have to make literature reviews, read papers more and more papers. They people are asking to read to us so that we can understand the research context. Right? Relay always establish the your research connection with the pre-existing domain to explore the new. Right? We always have to, you know, establish the connection of our pre-existing uh, domain to explore, so that we can explore some new concepts with us. Right? So this is the understanding part of the paper. We should understand the purpose of the research, the context of the research. Now we have R under this U R P Q P C. Then we have R, the research norms. We should follow the research norms. Strictly, we should follow the research norms. Then only we can reduce the plagiarism. Right? We should focus on honesty, ethics, and integrity. Stay out from buying, stealing, or borrowing research papers and passing off as your own. We should avoid these things. We should not engage. We should not hire someone else to write our research papers or part of our paper on behalf of ourselves. We should follow legal procedures and rules of academic integrity. Right. So these are some research norms. Be an ethically legal person to stand up and face the challenges with the courage so that you can proudly say, I do my research confidently by crossing all the barriers. And we, you know, have we should have some, we, we should use some more courage to, you know, say this, that I do my research confidently by crossing all the barriers. And I can say this only when I follow the norms of the research, when I focus on uh, honesty, ethics, and integrity to reduce plagiarism or to make my research paper as a quality paper. <clears throat> then another aspect is permission. We should, sometimes we use, you know, copyrighted material. Sometimes we use other texts. So we should ask for permission then. Permission is to use copyright materials. What are copyright laws? Laws which protects our intellectual property, intellectual property like uh, like text, image, music, or any media we are uh, we have, uh, which is copyrighted. And the symbol of copyrighted is uh, this is shown as in the uh, slide C uh, uh, C in a uh, sphere. Right. So whenever we see this symbol, we should know that uh, this is a copyrighted material, and we should uh, ask for permission for this uh, uh, material. Right. Ask for permission to use others' material before using in your research. Always give credit to the copyright holder when you are using their material. As we have discussed this <clears throat> many a times in, the, in this session that we should also give credit to the, to, uh, to the copyright holder when we are using the, uh, their materials. This is the first and the foremost aspect. We should use, we should acknowledge the person, right? Next one is quotation. Use quotation mark 
to specify that the text has been taken from other sources. When you are quoting, remember that the quoted material is copied exactly from the source. You cannot change a single letter also. Right? This is the uh, rule for quotation that we have to exactly copy the material. We cannot change a single letter in quotation. Right? Do not forget to acknowledge in citation as well as the references. We should acknowledge the person to whom we are using the quote. The master idea for quotation is show what you copied in the research paper. <clears throat> These are the examples of uh, you know quotation, uh, quotation plagiarism scenario. The original construction of evidences after the crime through digital devices have been a great challenge in the cyber world. This is a quotation. This is the part given by someone, and uh, this is the source credit. Uh, Barik LBK 20 uh, second forensic sign this <clears throat> and if we use this uh, quote as a reconstruction of evidences after crime through digital devices have been a great uh, you know challenge in the cyber world it comes under plagiarism why so because it is not properly quote it is properly quoted but it is not cited Right? We have not uh, we have not used any citation here, so it comes under plagiarism. Next is <clears throat> if we cite this, like uh, uh, in, the, in this scenario in yellow part, uh, we cite this as Barik 2022. Right? The, this comes this also comes under uh, this you know uh, uh, plagiarism. Why so? Because proper, it is properly quoted but not cited in text citation. Right? And here we are missing the references, the source credit. We have to, you know, give references also. We have to cite as well as we have to give the references also, right? <clears throat> now, for, for this uh, aspect, the reason of plagiarism is neither properly quoted nor cited in text citation, but missing references, right? Here, it is cited but it is not properly quoted. We have some rule for quotation. Here, there is uh, we can see that there is no plagiarism here, right? Reconstruction of evidences after a crime through a digital device have been a great challenge in our cyber world. This is this comes under inverted commas. And remember that this uh, full stop after word is comes inside inverted comma. This is also a rule for this. Also have cite the, cited the person like Barik 2022. And we also have mentioned the reference that Barik LBK 2022 and all, right? So this is the reason why there is no plagiarism. We caught it properly, we cite it properly, we reference it properly, right? So in this way, we can reduce our plagiarism. And you can see that we are using others words but it does not come under plagiarism. Why so? Because we are using proper you know, research norms. We are citing, we are referencing, and we are acknowledging the person as well. These are some rules for you know, quotation. Uh, quotation always use double quotation marks, right? For example, follow research ethics, teacher says. We use that, this uh, uh, quotation here. Direct quotation starts with a capital letter unless it is divided into two or more parts. Second part should, should be start with lower case letter. For example, teacher says, always follow research ethics and also academic integrity, right? So we can see in the, in the inverted commas, always starts with a capital letter and another second part uh, that is start with academic integrity a starts with a small letter. So this is the rule for you know writing a quotation in the paper. Uh, periods and commas should be in placed inside in the quotation, as I already have mentioned that uh, we should all, always use commas and uh, uh, full stops uh, in inside the uh, you know quotation marks. Then the question mark and exclamation mark are included inside the quotes when the, uh, the when the punctuation applies to the quotation itself. And the, uh, these marks are included outside the course when it applies to the whole sentence. This is the example. What, what is the weather of the condition? Question mark is inside the you know quotes. Oh, it's cloudy. We have exclamation you know mark. 
it is also inside the uh, quotation and, and now next one is when it applies the whole sentence who said space is empty now the question mark is outside the quotes next is we have semicolons and columns use of semicolons and columns should always be you know placed outside this uh, closing quotation mark as shown in this uh, example if students are preparing for their semester we uh, you know closed this quotation and uh, after that we use semicolon then they will go for a holiday then we have some uh, we must have to follow some you know use some uh, questions ca caution regarding quotation that do not quote often do not quote one source too many times do not quote too long follow single citation style in both in text citation and references right it is not the case that we use inverted commas in quotation and we use single commas in referencing this is not done this this is you know wrong way to cite a quota, uh, quotation so we should uh, you know follow single citation style in text both uh, both in text citation and references now the interesting part paraphrase we all know paraphrasing paraphrasing and paraphrasing the paraphrase means restatement of source ideas by writing in your own words if you are changing few words directly or by means of synonym but keeping original sentence structure then it is comes under plagiarism remember this paraphrase paraphrase poorly this comes under poorly paraphrase right to paraphrase properly and to avoid plagiarism you have to rewrite the sentence in own word by keeping precautions that your restatement must relay the essence or the meaning of the source right paraphrasing doesn't mean that we use some tools and we paraphrase uh, we use some synonyms right we have to properly paraphrase the thing without changing without you know uh, changing the essence or the meaning of the source always relay the words and ideas of source with the, your own thoughts and ideas so that interconnection should be maintained to avoid the plagiarism right so do not forget to acknowledge the master idea for this paraphrasing is show what you rewrite we should always acknowledge uh, what we are rewriting uh, the what what portion of others paper i am using we should always you know acknowledge that we should always show what we are rewriting the techniques for effective plagiarism now we have to discuss do not copy exact wording or origin of original source do not just rearrange or replace a few words this come this might you know in to paraphrase read the original text carefully until you understand its complete meaning that is why you know guides always focus or good researchers always focus on literature review to read literatures that uh, why so because they can get clear understanding of the you know research paper on which they are working upon then only they can uh, change the sentence they can paraphrase the sentences clearly uh, uh, clarify your purpose of paraphrasing check whether your paraphrase convey the original meaning or not avoid personal opinion in the paraphrase compare your paraphrase text and original text acknowledge the source properly once again i am writing this that we should acknowledge we must have to acknowledge the source properly in a way to reduce the plagiarism right <clears throat> now let us see an example of plagiarism scenario of paraphrasing here a thought is introduced uh, to rewrite uh, to retrieving and investigating the suspect privacy and m and membrane right uh, is a hypothetical device which can preserve and remember whatever in the violated ram so we can write it as n membranes is a hypo and membrane in a, is a hypothetical system which can remember the content of vol volatile ram right this is okay this is plagiarized in the a good way but this is uh, <clears throat> somehow for this sentence the meaning is not clear right and it is poorly paraphrased and this is not cited again now if we consider this as non -plagi plagiarism uh, like uh, i am reading this part only bari 2022 i am mentioning i am citing the person proposed a theoretical system for recovering and inspecting the 
respect privacy known as n membrane which can memorize the content of volatile rem right here in this case we have no plagiarism and the reason of no plagiarism is we are perfectly paraphrasing this and we are citing this with citation and with the um, in this way we can reduce our plagiarism <coughs> they, uh, there are some you know plagiarism rules while you paraphrase cite the original work using either the narrative or parenthetical uh, citation like we have green 1975 explored the relation of number of a scale point in reliability using simulations so this is the correct way to you know cite the original work of the author <clears throat> now next uh, one is citation and this is the last part of this unique research paper qualify pure corner is citation citation is there are, you know, uh, there are the notation in the text of a paper that identify the source. You have to acknowledge and give credit to the source which you are using in a proper, uh, which you are using in a your, in your paper. You can provide citation in many ways. Example, by uh, we can use footnotes uh, by the help of endnotes by the help of references. We can cite the things. We can cite the the portion which we are using from other papers. Uh, you are citing, but it's still plagiarized, right? Right. This is the question. We always see that we are mentioning the references. Now we are citing uh, uh, the author's name also. Why are paper? Why this shows uh, uh, as uh, the plagiarized paper? The reasons may be the source you cited is hard to find or not to find. The, uh, maybe you are following wrong citation format and style. That is why you know. Your guides, uh, our guides always, you know, ask us to use some, you know, specified, pre-specified formats or styling for referencing. Maybe you uh, you are mixing more than one citation style. Maybe you are altered your citation. You altered your citation. So be careful what, when, where, and how to cite. These are the three W and one H formula of citation. What, when, where, and how to cite. Now, the master plan to avoid the plagiarism, properly read the source material again and again until you can understand it completely. Always take notes in regard of uh, the formula, uh, the method which I have used here, URPQPC to avoid plagiarism. That is, understand and, uh, uh, you know, quote properly, paraphrase properly, cite properly and all. So, uh, source track is citation. Be always have to you know make our citation in a proper uh, way identification track we have to understand the research which we are using like what you want to paraphrase what you want to code what you want to uh, you know want you what for permission for copyright we have to identify the details right in execution track we have paraphrase quotation and permission right we must have to execute our research paper in terms that we should paraphrase properly, we should quote properly, and we should acquire the permission before using that uh, you know copyrighted material in our research paper. So this, this is the uh, master plan as by my uh, as per my concern to avoid plagiarism. If we follow these things, we should always avoid plagiarism, and we can you know we can be able to write good quality papers without plagiarism. Now let us come to our aspect of this uh, uh, session. Uh, we have discussed uh, something about plagiarism uh, till, then, till now. Now let us come to the plagiarism detection methods. Right? Uh, for plagiarism detection, we have two methods with us. Uh, called as human detection, human interaction, suitable for a small task or assignment, long time process. It is uh, the manual process. <clears throat> and uh, now what we are offering, now, uh, we are using nowadays is automatic detection call as computer assisted detection, computer interaction, suitable for small as well as bulk task, short time process, right? We are uh, uh, using it in shorter duration of time. Automatic uh, plagiarism detection tools. We have our paper. We uh, put that paper into some software interface, interface like we are using Turnitin, Orkut, etc. And we find a report uh, like a similarity index report. Right. We will uh, discuss this in a practical scenario also. <clears throat> uh, these are, uh, you know, the some 
useful tools which we can use for plagiarism checker uh, checking or similarity index report to find the similarity index report like partially useful systems we have or called we have Turnitin, we have copy space in india uh, uh, nowadays we are using Turnitin as a whole right uh, marginally useful systems we have or uh, plague aware strike plagiarism and so on right for useful uh, for academic purpose we have plague checker like for uh, our masters students and all Plag uh, plague checker plagiarism oaps plagiarism finder etc and uh, uh, system not tested they they are you know uh, saying that uh, they are a good plagiarism they, they, these companies or these tools but uh, system not tested uh, till now again like we have academic plagiarism small seo tools uh, you know we might uh, find it on internet when we search on internet how to check plagiarism then we find this plagiarism checker and uh, small seo tools you know so uh, these are the system not tested plagiarism tools these are the you know 20 uh, plus uh, plagiarism detection tools with us like dupli checker copy leaks paper data plagiarism plagiarism checker uh, the, uh, these are you know different different plagiarism checking uh, checker tools with us now let us see a practical demonstration for turnitin uh, i am using this turnitin uh, with the permission of my institute <laughs> and uh, now let us come to this plagiarism this is the dashboard uh, for uh, turnitin uh, now if we I, if i come Ritesh 2, this is the name of the class which uh, you know we have made and uh, uh, in this uh, we have to go for this like actions, uh, under actions we have view and here uh, you, if you can see that we have a you know, button called submit file. With, this, with the help of this submit file, I can submit a new file for plagiarism checking. I have to you know mention the names like I have mentioned that Ankit. And submission title is uh, we are mentioning that FBP ARM. And now I have to choose the file from where I have to select this. Uh, choose the file from this computer. Then FDP ARM. Like I have selected this and I have to check the plagiarism for this. They, uh, for, uh, after waiting some for some time, we have to click on this upload button. Then uh, this ask for confirmation. Now this are uh, then this ask for confirm and I have to go for go to assignment inbox. Right, I have to wait for some time. Let me just refresh it. So if I check uh, that uh, the second one is Ankit Garg FTP ARM title. I, I mentioned author name is Ankit Garg and the similarity index is 14%. Right. And uh, the date on which I have checked is 2nd of June 2023. This is the paper ID. If our institute, you know, sometimes our uh, uh, guides ask us to give uh, this I paper ID also. So if I click on this uh, green button, then I a new window will be open now this is the plagiarism report generated by turnitin right if you see that uh, now, uh, we, uh, these are the this is the turnitin report uh, The red one is the plagiarized data and the source is also mentioned at the last. If I click on this, then I used to get 14%. So uh, this is something you see MTA dot in and I use this source with 6% plagiarism in, uh, in among this 14%, you know, by 6% of my plagiarism comes with this data. The, uh, this source this is the internet source umcta right so i have to work on it i have to properly mention i have to properly acknowledge the work of this and i have to properly rephrase the things right then only i can reduce this plagiarism second one is we have uh, you know two percent 
two percent plagiarism from Li uh, Liverpool, a student paper, right? So this is the way how Turnitin, you know, gives us plagiarism, right? This is the study of consumer behavior towards online shopping. Someone also used this topic, right? So this comes under plagiarism. And now if I have to show this report to my guide or to someone else, then I have to click on this download button and click on this download uh, current view. If someone asks you for digital receipt, then you have to click on this uh, download button and do uh, click on this digital receipt, right? So, one second, please. this is preparing to download. It will take some time to download it. Now, if I open this file, at the end of the report, I found all the sources mentioned here. <clears throat> they show that 14% similarity index, 11% of the plagiarism comes from internet sources, 1% from publications, and 4% from student papers. And the source uh, uh, and the percentage of plagiarism is given here. Right from six sources, I you know use that data. So to reduce that uh, this plagiarism, I have to uh, you know clearly uh, as we have already discussed in the presentation that uh, we have to clearly or you know uh, paraphrase and we have to cite the things, we have to acknowledge the things, and we have to mention the referencing. Right. This uh, this is the detail uh, given by Turnitin that the character count of my uh, my document is. 4909 word count is 891 words, uh, 819 words are there in this document, right? The file name was this, and submission ID is this, and submission date is date at the with the time, right? Now, we will come to this uh, terminating again. Now, we all have heard about uh, the tool called Chat GPT, right? If we use this chat GPT and then we check the plagiarism, turn it in also, you know, find the plagiarism from this. If we use consumer behavior. Right, I am writing here is consumer behavior and turn it in gives me something of consumer spelling. I'm creating a new file with this. Right, this is the content given by, uh, to me by this chat GPT. And uh, if I think that I can use this as uh, in my research paper and uh, all other things, so it is not so, right? Because Turnitin make, uh, Turnitin, you know, shows the plagiarism, right? If I save it, uh, save this file. Right, it's not, right. Now I have to check the plagiarism for this. Go to that submit file. Mention the name. Like now I am mentioning the name like Ritesh single and uh, get GPT. I'm uploading the document. This, right? I have to click on this upload. Then confirm. Then go to assign. I have to wait for some time till then it checks the similarity index. Okay. See, we have this chat GPT. People are, say that the chat GP, GTP helps us to give unique data, but Turnitin shows 53% plagiarism, right? And if you can see,
and if you can see that the tool which is you know here in the blue button 100 percent ai percentage may not indicate the academic misconduct review required right the turn it in shows that this data is 53 percent plagiarized you are using this you know data from various sources without mentioning their name without citing their names without you know giving proper referencing to data right uh, this is 53% plagiarized data and this is generated by AI tool. 100% of this data is generated by AI tools. This shows, this is, you know, checked by plagiarism and this is shown here. Right. In this way, Turnitin helps us to reduce plagiarism. Turnitin helps us to find out whether we are, our data is plagiarized or not, whether we are going in the right way or not. Like uh, a student paper submitted to Manipal University, 18% uh, of this data is copied from this source, right? Submitted to Fiji National University student paper, 12% of this data out of this 53% is copied from this source only, right? So before using any tool, any AI generated tool or any, you know, uh, uh, paraphrasing tool, we must have to think whether we are doing wrong, right or wrong, whether we are uh, misconducting research ethics or not, right? Uh, also, it gives us a poor research, poor research results. Like we are, you know, believing that uh, Chat GPT is giving, you know, pure uh, data with to us. Chat GPT is, you know, giving unplagiarized content to us. And Turnitin shows that it is 100% AI generated tool. Also, in addition, it is 53% copied data, plagiarized data, right? So we have to use proper citation. We have to use proper paraphrasing. Uh, we have to make the paraphrasing by ourselves only, right? So we have to follow some ethics with us. So in this way, we can use Turnitin and Chat GPT. Uh, if we consider Chat GPT uh, AI tool as a good research tool, right? It sometimes it helps us to find out research gaps also. Like I have written here that uh, research gap on a study of consumer behavior towards online shopping of durable goods with special reference to uh, Delhi NCR, right? Uh, right. So if I am a you know nuanced researcher, I, I am starting my research. Right. I, I do not know how to write research papers and how to find uh, on what aspects I have to work on this topic. I, I have this topic only. Right. A study of consumer behavior towards online shopping of durable goods with a special reference to this Delhi NCR. Uh, I am a PhD student, a research scholar and uh, my guide told me that uh, you have to identify some research gaps. You have to fi you have to find out on what gaps, on what aspects you can work on this topic. Right. So. I can use chat GPT like tool uh, in this way also. Like if I search it here, the search gaps on this, chat GPT will provide me something. This is done from this tool side. Like we have, uh, you know, here are some potential research gaps to for your study. Like trust and study. I should work on this. I can uh, I can find out some uh, uh, literature uh, papers for this. Th th we can use this tool in this way. You know, I can search uh, some research papers on trust and security in online shopping. I can search on some research papers on consumer decision making process to understand this aspect, right? I can search that some papers on consumer attitudes and perception, some research papers on this also. I can search papers on this uh, you know, online shopping experience in the area, in this uh, the area you have mentioned, like Delhi and CR. I can also find out some you know papers or some literature reviews to you know cross-cultural analysis, some on technology adoption and digital divide. Right. In this way, we can effectively use the tools like Chat GPT or some other tools like Bing available in the market. Right. To find out the research gaps, to find out a base, a ba you know, a, plat a basic platform for us 
to start our research paper or to start our study. Sometimes it is, you know, we get very much confused. We ask people uh, like, uh, please tell me how to, you know, write paper. Please tell me how to start in writing a paper. I, I have something in my mind, but I do not know how to go with this, how to start with this. So for this purpose, you can use this, uh, the tools like this chat GPT. Right. You can ask him, you can ask this tool that how to write a research paper. The, it, the tool gives you a process that first you have to make a, uh, understand the topic or the problem. Then you have to go for literature review. Then you have to go for research questions and objectives and uh, the process of research. Right. So this helps us in, uh, in certain in many ways to, to make our research properly. Another aspect of this chat GPT is like if I put this a study of uh, st a consumer uh, online shopping of durable goods with references. Some people are using chat GPT also. Let us see what it gives to us. Okay. I'm just changing a small thing. Sometimes, like AI tool will give us references in this way, right? I study of consumer behavior towards online shopping or durable. I asked the chat GPT to give me these references and it gives me these, uh, you know, uh, 8 to 10 references, right? But what we found that uh, when we copy these references and we ask Google to find this research paper, we are not able to find it anyhow, right? So always consider, always remember, we should always remember that while using these tools, right? We should not, uh, you know, solely reliable or solely, you know, focus on these tools only. We should cross check the things. If chat GPT is giving me some references like here, it is giving me some references, right? We should also check on this uh, and copy this and uh, we should also check this on Google, right? To clarify the things to uh, that uh, the paper with chat GPT is uh, showing me and uh, giving me in ref like, uh, for referencing is already available or not on the Google, right? So in this way, we must have to, you know, uh, be cautious to find out the research like uh, these are the examples which it gives to me and uh, right, right and now we i have to copy this and i have to check whether it is it gives it is giving me uh proper referencing or not it, uh, whether this paper is available or not you know by clicking these links you can identify you can check that this paper is available or not or whether chat gtp is giving me wrong references the topic is impact of website control on uh, uh, consumer satisfaction and purchase intention evidence from chinese uh, online visitor and that reference given by this is uh, the impact of website okay so this is the correct reference but many a cases it, uh, <coughs> it you know it is uh, uh, asked by the people told by the people that uh, many in many in the many of the cases chat gpt is giving you know uh, wrong references to us so be aware with this we should be uh, aware with this right so this is the basic use of chat gpt uh, which we can use uh, to make our research more uh, you know interesting to make our research more uh, you know quality work right we also we uh, also help have, have covered the use of this uh, chat gpt now let us come to the tool called uh, grammarly we have uh, uh, the tool called grammarly this is the you know dashboard of grammarly very simple and uh, you know easily and un understandable tool grammarly provides us now i have to click on this uh, uh, new or to upload button i'm clicking on this uh, uh, upload button and uh, i have to go that folder only This is the file I already have made for, you know, to check uh, on Grammarly, Grammarly Word doc. Now, when I click on OK, it gives me suggestions. 
it gives me you know it first of all it uh, asks uh, asks me to set the goals goals that uh, for what for, for what audience you are uh, checking this so i am saying that uh, my audience are knowledgeable the formality is neutral domain should be journal and intent will be like this right i am clicking on this done now grammarly helps me to check my document properly right in the way that it gives me uh, this uh, that i uh, in the place of this comprehending i have to use the word comprehend right the grammarly makes my document more fluent in english more proper in terms of english language which helps me to gain the advantage right so it shows me the overall 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 score if you you know can see at the uh, right uh, top corner of right hand side 96% overall score right in the in terms of clarity it gives me very clear in nature this uh, paragraph this uh, the paragraph i have used is very clear in nature and this is the overall sco score i can download it i can use in my phd thesis or uh, uh, somewhere if some people ask me that uh, have you done a gram uh, english uh, language check or not for this document so i can show this that i have done this uh, english language check for my document and uh, i have 96 you know overall score right i can download the pdf in the way this is the report given by grammarly to me right this also helps us in various ways in many ways it it helps us to show to the uh, to our guides to show to the you know journals also sometimes right now we have some other tool also for paraphrasing i'm not saying right that we should use some paraphrasing tool in our research right we should if we are we have to paraphrase i already have discussed in my slides that we have to paraphrase the things in our own language by properly understanding the concept and only we have to you know paraphrase the things and uh, we have to cite it accordingly right but for uh, uh, for our academic purposes like we can use uh, this chat gpt for example let us say in my college we have a you know a debate competition on a g20 and i have to give a speech on g20 and uh, i am just uh, writing it here that give me a script on g20 chat gpt is giving me a script This is very useful tool in this scenario. If we, you know, we have to do something in a less amount of time. So I'm just copying this and I go to my paraphrasing tool, which we have discussed that uh, these are the tools, paraphrasing tools available in the market, uh, like Quillbot is the famous tool in the market right nowadays. I, th this is the, you know, dashboard of this Quillbot, right? Uh, I have to paste here the text to which I have to, I, I want to paraphrase this, like, and I click on this paraphrase. And let's see what it gives to us. It is now paraphrasing the things. done with uh, this now let us see the uh, it is shown that in introduction part new news anchor good evening ladies and gentlemen and today we bring uh, you special coverage of the g20 summit right this is the first sentence before paraphrasing after paraphrasing we have the news anchor good morning guys and women 
टुडे वी ब्रिंग यू इन इन डेप्थ कवरेज ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी समिट तो सो इट चेंजेस द यू नो वे सेंटेंस द वे ऑफ द सेंटेंस इट पैराफ्रेजेस इट इट यूजेस सम सिनोनियम्स लाइक वी हैव लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट यूजेस गाइस एंड वुमेन राइट सो वी हैव टू प्रॉपर्ली चेक दिस बिफोर यूजिंग दिस पैराफ्रेजिंग टूल्स राइट we uh, we are using that special coverage of g20 summit and it gives we bring you in depth coverage of uh, <coughs> this uh, it, uh, para, it use is uh, in depth in place of this special right so in this way paraphrasing tools helps us to you know change the things to paraphrase the things in a uh, manner right you can use this in your academic purposes also uh, if we have to write some notices uh, for our students or some uh, for other purposes we can use change the language after changing the language we can check on uh, this grammarly after checking on grammarly or uh, after changing the language we can check it on this turnitin after turnitin we can check it on grammarly to make our proper a full fledged quality research work a full fledged proper report we can use these types of tools like turnitin we have grammarly we have chat gpt we have right i am not a uh, uh, you know suggesting that we should go for this paraphrasing tools we can use this these types of paraphrasing tools for uh, the purposes like uh, uh, this i have shown for a script generation for you know notice generation as well because for a quality paper we must have to understand the essence of the paper we must have to follow the rules of the you know research ethics we must have to follow the integrity of the research right so i always suggest to use uh, these tools right to check your plagiarism with the help of uh, this plagiarism uh, uh, this turnitin or orkun whatever your organization is you know allowing you to use so uh, we already have used this and uh, thank you uh, that's uh, this is all from my side ritesh sir sir i am done with thank you thank you thank you so much uh, dr ankit gir uh i take this opportunity to thank you for this insightful session you have discussed in detail the various aspects of ethics in publication research paper writing various technical aspect of how we can write a, a research paper uh, that comply with the ethical code of conduct how we can use the various tools uh, like uh, turned in to uh, find out the plagiarism and the uh, use of chat gpt the myth which we are having regarding the chat gpt and you have clearly uh, described uh, how uh, we can use chat gpt what are the various uh, uh, demerits of chat gpt that something we can that something you have discussed in detail the paraphrasing software which you have explained is something which could be used by each one of us for writing a good and quality research paper thank you so much sir thank you for giving such a wonderful session thank you so much thank you uh, now may i request uh, dr ritesh singhal to, to kindly deliver the uh, vote of thanks to all the resource person and participants thank you rahul sir thank you sir so after this day 5 session completion we are going towards vote of thanks and after this and after that we would be having certificate distribution ceremony so please stay with us in between i am sharing the link of uh, this particular fdb uh, that is feedback link and don't forget to fill that particular link also so ladies and gentlemen good evening and warm welcome to each and every one of you today we gather here to express our heartfelt gratitude and extend a vote of thanks for successful completion of the faculty development program on advanced research methodology analysis and interpretation using spss and mos this program has been a remarkable journey filled with insightful discussions invaluable knowledge sharing and immense personal growth first and foremost foremost i would like to express my deepest gratitude to dr t r pandey director akgim 
for his continuous support and motivation and the resource person who graced us with their extensive knowledge and ex expertise we are fortunate to have uh, professor klaus subtil from dhpw germany who shared valuable insights into advanced data management techniques data procurement and data management systems his presence and guidance throughout the program have undoubtedly enhanced our understanding for research methodology furthermore i would like to express our deepest appreciation to the distinguished resource persons like dr dushyant tyagi dr gautam jaiswal professor pankaj chauhan dr ankit garg and myself who have grace graciously contributed their time and expertise to make this fdp an enriching experience through their engaging lectures interactive sessions and thought provoking thought provoking discussions they have broadened our horizons and deepened our understanding of subjects at, at the end we owe them a debt of gratitude for their invaluable contribution i would also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to each and every participant of this fdp your active participation enthusiasm and dedication have been instrumental in making this fdp a resounding success the diverse perspective insightful questions and stimulating conversation that emerged from our interactions have creating a, a vibrant learning environment it is through you your collective efforts that we have been able to foster a culture of continuous learning and professional development there are uh, uh, participants from several institution i would like i would also like to thanks the institution also uh, institution like rkgit gazebad high tech institute of engineering and technology inman tech institution ims university campus ims gazebad ims engineering college ajit magar engineering college iimt university merit krishna group of institution dme college mm university mulana ambala gl bajaj institute of management vidya school of business management sgt university ims noida iftm university muradabad and dr apj abdul kalam technical university lucknow we must also acknowledgeable the efforts of the organizing committee including professor pankaj chauhan professor rahul singhal and dr ankit garg and support staff who have worked tirelessly behind the scene to ensure the smooth smooth execution of this fdp their meticulous planning attention to details and untiring commitment to excellence have been indispensable from coordinating logistics to providing technical support they have played a crucial role in creating a conducive environment for learning and growth thank you once again to the resource person participants organizing committee support staff students and management of the institution your unwavering support and active participation have made this fdp an unforgettable experience we look forward to future endeavor that will continue to foster growth and excellence thank you and have a wonderful day now please stay with us uh, we have a certificate for all of you i'm sharing the link i'm sharing the presentation where i have collected all the certificates Ritesh, unmute yourself, please. Okay. So first of all, certificates for resource person: Professor Klaus Saptil, uh, Dr. Dushyant Tyagi, Dr. Gautam Jaiswal, Professor Pankaj Chauhan. Participants, you can take screenshot of this. Uh, if you want, Professor Rahul Singhal, Dr. Ankit Garg, Dr. Ritesh Singhal, and now certificates for participants. I am having a break of one or two second in between. You can take a screenshot in between if you want. Although all the certificates would be dispatched, will be uh, mailed you uh, either today or by tomorrow. So participant side. 
Aldrin Castellino. Uh, Amrita Bhatnagar. Dr. Priyank Sharma. Dr. Sarju Pandita. Dr. Sashank Sahu. Dr. Simmi Kurana. Dr. Vidhi Agrawal. Dr. Aarti Garg. Dr. Akash Kumar. Dr. Ankit Garg. Dr. Mani Kansal. Dr. Manupriya Gaur. Dr. Munawar Hussain. Dr. Neha Sharma. Dr. Neha Varma. Dr. Sakshi Sharma. Dr. Vineet Kaushik. Jayashri Jain. Kamna Singh. Lucky Gupta, Mansi Singhal, Neeta Sahu, Pankaj Chauhan, Radhika T, Ramesh Kumar, Rashmi Singh, Sachin Sharma, Sangamitra Das, Saral Garg, Sarika Tripathi, Shilpa Chaudhary, Subhash Kumar, Surbhi Agrawal, Surbhi Singhal, Suraj Manchanda, Swati Tripathi, Varun Chaudhary, Vikas Roshan, Vipul Kumar, Vishal Gupta, Yatika Rastogi. That's it. And the copy of certificate would be emailed to you uh, either by today evening or by tomorrow. Uh, now I'm going to share the uh, link, feedback link. Please do share that particular link. It will help us to, uh, to, you can say, to improve our delivery in the next FDP.
I think that is from that is all from my side. Pankaj sir, if you want to add something, uh, just to say, uh, sir, like to feedback link on the uh, chat box. Yes, sir. We are we are sharing. Okay, sir. Uh, Akash sir, Sashank sir, and lot of other participants who are coming to join this program. I would request that if they can give their feedback here in face to face. Uh, feedback the link is available on the on the chat box. You please do share the feedbacks to us. And Sau sir, you want to add something? Ah, uh, just I want to say uh, it is a very nice yes, uh, sure. faculty development program, and uh, we got uh, uh, good learning. Especially, I just uh, want to say Pankaj sir and uh, Ankit sir as well as Ritesh sir. They have shared a very good knowledge related to research, and we got a good learning as well as a good, uh, very nice uh, external audience, uh, external uh, uh, persons are available for this FTP. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Akash sir. I request all the, I request all the participants to please switch on your camera for just a, for just few seconds, so that we can have a selfie or we can have a photograph. So AKGM participants. Sir, AKGM has always. Akash, been... Akash sir, please. Akash sir, please. Sir, AKGM has always been a guiding star for us. We have attended many FDPs in past, and also he forward look forward for in uh, more FDPs and best wishes to all of them, all my respected colleagues, and. To the AKGM faculty members, best wishes. Thank you, sir. Vishal, sir. Sir, Vishal. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank sir, you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Dr. Vineet, you want to add something? Dr. Vineet? Okay. So, we can see... Uh, <coughs> Anyone those who wants to share their experience? Swati ma'am. Ma Sir, I would say that I'm very thankful of uh, AKGIM for doing such kind of conference. And uh, I feel that in near future, we will participate, uh, participate in the same manner in the workshops which you will conduct. So I'm very much thankful to AKGIM as well as its faculty members. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Lucky ma'am, would you like to share something? Uh, congratulations to all of you for giving us such valuable knowledge and learning in, in these five uh, days. And um, looking forward for further FDPs from you people. Thank you so much. Pankaj sir, I, are, are we are now moving towards the end of the session. And uh, yes, uh, we'll, we'll take all your feedback as a, as a token of appreciation, as a token of support. And we definitely want to, we definitely will improve the sessions in the next FDPs. And uh, about your certificate, certificate will be emailed to you by two, by evening or tomorrow. Oh, no, no. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.